Hi, you've clicked onto the Tropical Tidbit for Saturday, August 5th, 2017. As always, the thoughts in this video are mine alone, and in making decisions, please consult the information from the National Hurricane Center and National Weather Service. Well, we have two areas to watch in the tropics today. One is a tropical wave in the Central Caribbean, and another in the Eastern Atlantic. Both of these have significant chances of tropical development over the next several days, according to the National Hurricane Center, with this one having 50% chance in the next five days, this one having 70% over the next five days. This might come down a little bit in subsequent outlooks here as uh, this wave is not developing the way that models have been expecting in a very aggressive way over the last couple of days. Uh, yesterday morning and the prior evening we had almost unanimous model consensus that this was going to spin up as soon as today or tomorrow and it is clear that this remains a very broad and elongated system. We have strong monsoonal southwesterlies on this side northeast trades on this side and then a very elongated area of shear vorticity in between with weak convection and there's really nothing consolidated here to get tropical development you need this to spin up into a circulation uh, that congeals into a compact area of rotation we do not see that here we see a very elongated area and this is always a sign that things are going to take a while to organize if ever and models have significantly backed off on chances of development for this system at least in the near future but we are going to have to watch it as it moves west northwest across the main development region toward the lesser Antilles here over the next several days this is the European forecast showing the wave axis on uh, Monday evening here and the GFS at the same time shows the same wave axis with hints of a low trying to form on the northern end and the GFS does still uh, attempt to make this a tropical storm but it's much less aggressive than it was a couple of days ago and uh, they've really backed off on some of these solutions largely due to the elongated and messy nature to this system so it is clearly not developing as quickly as expected but we will have to keep an eye on it and it may bring disturbed weather to the islands later in the week and of course anything that gets past into this area of the Atlantic uh, will have to be watched as it is August now and anything like this that ends up coming west we will have to keep an eye on until it is gone. What may be of more concern in the immediate future is this wave in the Central Caribbean which is a little bit more you can see a little more compact looking than this giant mess out in the eastern Atlantic and this may have a better shot ultimately of developing during the next few days at least. If we look at uh, the closer satellite shot from the NASA satellite page, uh, you might see a semblance of rotation in the mid-levels here, but there's really nothing at the surface. Uh, there's strong easterly trades coming through the Caribbean into Central America right now. If you look closely, you'll see southerlies in the low levels coming off of Colombia, south-southwest winds north of Panama, and then you'll see the east or east-northeast winds here. So you can see the positively tilted wave axis like this into the Central Caribbean. Now when these are tilted like this, you usually have stronger trade winds to the north and then lighter winds to the south. So a wave axis that is tilted like this will end up tilting more upright with time as it comes west and eventually when it nears the Yucatan Peninsula it will likely be aligned mostly north-south and this can often help the system try to congeal vorticity on the northern end and develop an area of low pressure along the wave axis and that may be what attempts to happen here as the system nears uh, the Yucatan sometime on Monday and uh, some models especially the European have uh, suggested that this will try to spin up an area of low pressure as it nears the Yucatan or after it crosses and moves into the Bay of Campeche after that. At the moment we don't see a lot of the surface except for this wave axis uh, but we do see an area of convection and uh, this area of trade winds is usually uh, very important for these waves. You'll see a, a very strong east to west belt of wind and you can see it actually ext extends right now all the way into Central America. Now usually these trade winds are very strong here and then they stop somewhere or not stop entirely but somewhere west of Jamaica they slow down and you get slower trades here. This usually allows air to pile up once uh, these systems get west of Jamaica and allows them to generate more convection and have a better chance of forming a closed low. At the immediate moment that is not the case because the strong trade wind belt actually extends all the way into Central America. The reason that is is because we have a strong deep layer ridge extending over the Gulf of Mexico from the southwest Atlantic right now. So we have high pressure over the Gulf and so we have very strong trade winds extending all the way past 80 and 85 degrees uh, west. Uh, over the next day these pressures are going to fall over the western gulf due, due to an approaching trough over the southern plains and as a result this pressure gradient here will weaken some and so the trades will lessen 
east of the Yucatan, and uh, the trade winds will then start piling up in this area and uh, perhaps allow this wave to become a little bit better organized as air is forced to rise and generate large-scale convection over this area of the Caribbean. The question is whether it will have time to develop prior to moving into the Yucatan or Central America. The European has hinted on and off that this may occur. The current run shows just a wave axis as it moves into the Yucatan on Monday evening, and the primary threat right now looks like very heavy rains, uh, but uh, tropical waves do tend to develop more easily in this Gulf of Honduras area once they get toward the Yucatan. And so we'll have to keep a close eye on this to see if it tries to spin up into a tropical storm just before landfall. But chances are it's going to run out of time before it's able to become a significant threat wind-wise. But plenty of heavy rainfall will be impacting the Yucatan regardless of development, and this will likely be the primary threat on Monday and Tuesday. As the European moves on into the Bay of Campeche, we do see development, which has been quite consistent in this model. And this is for Wednesday evening. You can see a bonafide tropical storm here in the model that would be a threat to Mexico here. And uh, this is probably the area where the system will really have to be watched because similar to the Gulf of Honduras, the Bay of Campeche is a favorite place for these tropical waves to spin up into tropical storms, largely due to frictional convergence and uh, a favorable inflow pattern induced by the cyclonically curved coastline here. Uh, this is a favorite place for storms to spin up. So we'll have to keep a close eye on the system. What track it takes would depend on exactly where it tries to form here, and it's really impossible to say when these waves are so elongated at this point. You'll see with these wave axes, there's always an elongated axis of vorticity, which is what you know defines the wave axis. It's an area where the flow is kinked and curved, and so you'll get this area where the low pressure can form sometimes anywhere along this wave axis. And so if you imagine the wave axis now translated to an area just off the coast of the Yucatan, if it does indeed try to form here, there's this whole elongated area where that low pressure center could spin up. And so that's why you always hear the wise saying that you got to wait for these to form before you latch onto the exact track because until you know where it is, uh, it's very hard to, to say where it will go. So we have to wait to see exactly where it tries to spin up here, but it is going to end up uh, east of the Yucatan and eventually in the Bay of Campeche. Whether it's actually forming at this point or if it waits till the Bay of Campeche is also uncertain at this point. But either way, regardless, uh, the primary threat is likely to be heavy rainfall here, and the disturbed weather will be over the Yucatan and Belize for sure, and perhaps extending all the way down into the northern coast of Honduras as this thing moves up sometime on Monday. And then the Bay of Campeche is probably the place where we're really going to have to watch 9DL once it gets across into the Gulf of Mexico. So keep an eye on these two systems. Again, right now, 30% chance over the next two days for 90L, 50% chance over five days from the National Hurricane Center. Uh, 99L, the one in the eastern Atlantic, currently has a 40% chance in two days, 70% in five days. This will likely come down a little bit, if I had to guess, over the next couple of outlooks, as again, this is not organizing nearly as quickly as models indicated, and support is dropping for Genesis here, but we will have to keep an eye on this as it comes west, and perhaps in the longer term, as it gets tangled up in this area of the Atlantic, we may have to keep an eye on it for a while yet, uh, just in case of Genesis. Uh, but for now, this is not an imminent threat. This, though, will be bringing disturbed weather, mostly heavy rain and gusty winds, to the Yucatan Peninsula, Belize, portions of Central America, and then on into the Bay of Campeche may become a threat to Mexico if it develops later in the week. So keep an eye on these two systems. That's it for today. Thanks for watching.